Yesterday was the 15-year anniversary of the radical Islamic terrorist attack that changed the world forever, and it is a solemn occasion. We would like to put our own unique perspective on the patriotism aspect surrounding this yearly memorial and the patriotism of today's United States. Our Dateline segment is scaled down to one part, and that is the infamous Bitch Slap of the Week because this person deserves an epic wake-up call as to what America is all about and who the oppressors really are in the governing apparatus of this country. It's a segment that opens the door to our liberal education annex, which tonight is on patriotism post 9-11. So we here at War Radio would like to thank you for joining us tonight and hope you enjoy this special edition of the show. The content, language, and opinions expressed in tonight's show are solely those of the original host and its contributors. The content, language, and opinions do not necessarily represent those of War Radio, the War Radio staff, or other hosts connected to this radio station or shows. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Line. Bitch Slap of the Week. What some might call the most satisfying part of Dateline is here. Dynamite! This is where we administer instant justice. No media disinformation, no liberal spin, facts presented and retribution given. (laughs) This week's winner of the Bitch Slap of the Week... San Francisco backup quarterback and bench warmer, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I mean, you talk about a no-brainer. Yes, it is. This anti-American... And what's the matter with you? Spoiled ingrate. What's the idea? Multi multi millionaire cheapskate. <laughs> has disrespected not only the American flag, the national anthem, <laughs> our brave men and women of the armed forces. <laughs> but the fearless police officers that protect and serve all of us. Those same police that not only protect his ungrateful butt at his NFL games, but protect his $3 million estate in the exclusive Silver Creek neighborhood of San Jose. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this prestigious award, you really have to be a monumental jerkweed to beat out everyone for the Bitch Slap Award. And in Kaepernick's case, he hit the trifecta. Wow. With a rarely achieved combination of cynicism, hypocrisy, and stupidity, (laughs) this phony baloney NFL has been, and his faux outrage has forced me to bring Don Corleone on to tonight's show. Because the Godfather 
hates grown men acting like little sissies. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Now let's backtrack for you a bit and explain what Colin Kaepernick's trifecta is. First, it's his cynicism that people will fall for his 11th hour conversion to the Black Lives Matter movement, precisely at the moment he was about to be cut from his team. And since no team wanted him in the offseason when the 49ers were trying to unload him, he knew his NFL career was almost over. You're a big fat phony! Which is why he pulled this stunt. He was cynically pre-playing the race card. Shame on you. And his hypocrisy is mind-blowing. Even though he signed a record seven-year, $126 million contract back in 2014, he never once donated one red cent to the black people and people of color he is using as a prop now. Hypocrisy, claiming to uphold morals and values while your behavior says otherwise. Not only is it hypocritical to now care about blacks, but he now calls them blacks and people of color. But back during a 49ers game just last year, he called a black player on the Chicago Bears a quote, unquote, effing n-word. You scum bag! Obviously, he said the full X-rated version of those two reprehensible words. Come on, what's the matter with you? And to complete the trifecta with the cynicism and hypocrisy, Kaepernick has shown monumental ignorance and stupidity. His wearing of socks depicting cops as pigs just emphasizes his moronic remarks about white police killing unarmed black men and getting away with it. You're an idiot. And while Colin Kaepernick cries about police brutality and killing unarmed black youths in the street left and right, he ignores the fact that in places like Chicago, there have been over 500 murders so far this year, and none of them perpetrated by a police officer. But that doesn't fit the liberal narrative. A recent deadly force study done by Washington State University researcher Lois James found that police are less likely to shoot unarmed black suspects than white or Hispanic suspects. Roland Fryer, an African-American economist professor at Harvard, analyzed over 1,000 officer-involved shootings. He concluded that there is zero evidence of racial bias in police shootings. The liberal Washington Post police shooting database and federal crime statistics show 12% of whites and Hispanics were killed by cops last year, while only 4% of blacks were killed by law enforcement. A police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black male, and of course the reverse is true. An unarmed black man is 18 and a half times less likely to be killed by a cop. In the first seven and a half months of 2016, in Chicago, over 2,300 people were shot. The vast majority of those were black. But in the same time frame, only 12 people were shot by police. And all 12 were armed and dangerous. And after all the left's red herrings and blatant lies that have been thrown out there just to promote the false liberal narrative about racist cops, what has been the result? There have been over twice as many police victimized by fatal shootings in the first three months of 2016 than the same period last year. And this hypocrite Kaepernick says that he has relatives that are in law enforcement? Liar, liar, liar. And to pile on the stinking heap of hypocrisy surrounding Kaepernick's actions this summer in an incident from April of 2014, after a night of wild South Beach partying in Florida, there was a naked lady in Colin Kaepernick's hotel suite that refused to leave. So who do you think they called? Anyone? 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 They called the police. Hello. <laughs> 
in a 911 call acquired by TMZ. It was either Kaepernick or his bestie, fellow 49er, Ricardo Lockett, who called the brutal and oppressive pigs to help them out when they had a situation. Look into the mirror and see your own hypocrisy. You can't make up this type of colossal hypocrisy. That's a fact, Jack! And you can't make up this numbskull's ignorance to truth, facts, and history. Just last month, this social justice warrior who fights against the oppression of blacks wore a Fidel Castro t-shirt during a press conference. Say what? Yep, this newly crowned activist idolizing Fidel Castro who, after just a few years into his dictatorship, declared his policies a total success and henceforth made it a crime to complain about racism or racial inequality in Cuba. That policy is still in effect today. One of the most egregious examples of oppression of black people was the imprisonment of Sonia Garrow, imprisoned for speaking out just like Kaepernick. Imprisoned by Kaepernick's hero, Fidel Castro. Sonia Garrow, an Afro-Cuban, was put in prison for almost three years just for speaking out against the oppressive Castro regime. And not only her. She and many in the group called Damas de Blanco were fired from their jobs and subsequently arrested for calling for the release of their husbands who were political prisoners, who were real victims of real police brutality. Beaten and tortured by Fidel's secret police. Real police brutality. Not by Kaepernick's imaginary American police brutality. And he wears a shirt idolizing the number one oppressor of blacks in Cuba. You're a moron! And just to close out this phony AstroTurf outrage over oppression of the black community... We call it AstroTurf. It's not really a grassroots movement. It's AstroTurf by some of the wealthiest people in America. Kaepernick was scheduled to speak to the predominantly black congregation of San Francisco's Third Baptist Church at their Sunday's service two weeks ago. But he bailed on them, canceling. Oh, no, you didn't. Canceling with a lame excuse. Come on, what's the matter with you? Even retired NBA players have weighed in on this faux social justice outrage. People like Laker legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who came out and called Colin Kaepernick courageous. That's a retarded, sir. How about someone, anyone, in the black community being courageous enough to call out the President of the United States, who has decimated the black community in his eight disastrous years? Under Barack Obama, there are now 39% of black children living in poverty up from what it was under the racist George W. Bush. Black youth unemployment is at a staggering 40%, while black teen unemployment in cities like Chicago has hit 90%. Black poverty has risen to 27.2% since Obama took office, with a record 12.2 million working-age blacks unable to find a job. Black workers' net worth has declined 20% since 2009, and the wealth gap between blacks and whites hasn't been so wide in 25 years. Does anyone have real courage to expose Obama as the catalyst for the black community's destruction over his two terms? Or do they want to keep sitting on their asses, whether it's at an NFL game or in their own communities? Will anyone of courage use their First Amendment right and speak out on the main catalyst for the economic depression of blacks in America. The over three million illegals flooded into the U.S. through Obama's intentionally porous borders and taking the urban jobs away from the black community. Shame on you, Mr. President. When there were grumblings from the crowd at the 2011 Congressional Black Caucus Convention, what was Obama's response? I don't know. I don't know. Was it that he would do a better job with inner-city crime? Mm -mm. 
No. Was it that he would create a black youth employment strategy? No. No, no, no. Was it that he would work to get the record 12.2 million blacks back to work? No. Hell no. No. It was, get to the streets and get me reelected, so I can bury you all under another flood of illegal Hispanics and my new flood of Muslim refugees. Take off your bedroom slippers. Put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. Oh, no. Nah. Come on now, baby. That's right. Places like Detroit and Chicago are turning into the killing fields for black youth, and black unemployment is going through the roof, and all Obama has to say is... Stop complaining! Stop grumbling! Stop crying! But then again, the hypocrisy by the so-called black leaders has been staggering. The chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Missouri Democrat, Representative Emanuel Cleaver, said just days before that same CBC convention in an interview with McClatchy newspapers that if Obama had been a white president and had failed to address those same problems in the black community, quote, we would probably be marching on the White House, unquote. And these schmucks like Kaepernick who sit, kneel, or raise their fists during the national anthem protesting about some white boogeyman keeping them down while earning millions in the NFL and ignoring the real roots to the oppression of the black community today. Hey, why don't you pull your head out of your butt? Now the fact of the matter is, it has been the Democrats that have been in control of two-thirds of the government for eight of the last ten years. That's a fact, Jack! Now in Colin Kaepernick's famous Fidel Castro t-shirt was also 60s civil rights activist Malcolm X. And the ignorant Kaepernick might be wise to listen to what Brother Malcolm had to say back in his famous speech he delivered in April of 1964, speaking out about blacks blindly supporting the Democrat Party. Anytime you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two-thirds of the government and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you are not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. But Kaepernick is nothing but a chump. A chump for not focusing his protest on the true perpetrators that have been overseeing the complete decimation of the black community for almost a decade now. President Obama and the Democrats. Instead of being grateful for a country that has allowed them to earn millions playing a kid's game, they should be grateful for a country that has given opportunities to people like Herman Cain, who came from poverty to be one of the most successful CEOs in the country. Or be grateful for a country that has given opportunities to people like Dr. Ben Carson, who worked his butt off to rise to the pinnacle of his medical profession. Or be grateful for a country that has given opportunities to people like Condoleezza Rice, who was born into the racist South in Birmingham, Alabama, fought her whole life through real racism and strife to become the first and only African-American woman to ever be fourth in line to the presidency of the United States of America. Instead of acting like spoiled little punks and use tired liberal false flags, get off your asses, leave your mansions, and go to the real places of real oppression. Go to the inner cities of America that have turned into poverty-stricken shooting galleries. And yes, call out the politicians that had promised everything, but delivered nothing. Even if those lying crooks are Democrats. Because if you don't... You're not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. You're listening to War. We are America Radio. Just when you thought that it couldn't get any better, yours truly, Dan Adams, my show has moved to Wednesday nights. 
8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, followed by the incomparable Wayne Dupree Show. This is war. We are America Radio. From Iraq and Afghanistan. Our brave warriors are coming home, wounded. Some with wounds you can see, some with wounds you can't see. Wounded Warrior Project was created to support our men and women coming off the battlefield. Please help carry these warriors the rest of the way home. Get involved at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Welcome back to the Ascend Conservatism Show, coming to you live and direct every Monday night right here on War Radio. That's We Are America Radio. And this is a segment of the show we call the Liberal Education Annex. Now since we just had the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks yesterday, we thought it would be interesting to take a look back at how patriotism has evolved since that horrific day. Of course, as we all remember, there was a massive tsunami of American pride after we were attacked on that September day. And, as a nation, we showed the world how strong, as a unified people, we truly can be. Our hearts burst with pride at the many young, brave men and women that immediately enlisted to defend our country from this new evil enemy. Fast forward to today and we have probably the lowest morale as a country that we have ever had. In our Dateline segment earlier, I feel we addressed the disrespect the spoiled brat NFL players have been showing and how they have pointed their faux outrage in the wrong direction. As I told those on social media who talked about oppression of the black community, I dispelled this myth by simply stating facts. That not only has the American flag never oppressed a single person, but the national anthem hasn't either. And we won't be addressing the cynical, moronic, hypocrite Colin Kaepernick in tonight's annex as the epic bitch slap he just received will not only make him dizzy for quite a while, but his grandkids will be born with their cheeks aching. And they'll all grow up to be law enforcement officers. But I digress. Patriotism in this country is what this annex is all about, and it is so disheartening to see how the love for this great nation has fallen to a level not seen since, I can only imagine, of that during the Vietnam War. And it's a shame that the country that was once the shining city on the hill has been used as a wedge between the same people it was created to bring together as one nation under God. And if you look back honestly as to when we lost our way as a unified country of patriots, proudly displaying old glory outside our homes and on our cars, it was when the Democrat Party decided that their political power was in danger and as the Republican president had a 90% approval rating, and in a very rare occasion, his party gained seats in his first midterm election, it was at this unique moment, a vital crossroads not only for America, but a crossroads for the Democrat Party, that unfortunately, they took the path less traveled. The path to division and partisanship. As we see now, in the current presidential election, it's the Democrat Party officials that stopped their supporters from chanting USA, USA, USA at the Democrat National Convention this year, as it was this chant of patriotism that was deemed only a Republican chant. It was this purely selfish turn the Democrats took around 2003 that has led us to today, a more divided nation than it has been for over a generation. At the moment that this country, the country that has always led all free nations around the globe was attacked, it could have been the beginning of the golden age 
of the American Renaissance around the world. But it was petty, self-interest Democrats that chose politics over country and party over people. Patriotism has been reserved only for us on the right, as the liberals in this country have decided to use it as a wedge issue to scare up votes. The American flag is so prevalent in this country and the national anthem is sung at all major sporting events and in schools that it must be the thing that has failed the poor in this country. These inanimate objects that are the symbols of the country must be the oppressors of the minorities in the inner cities because if they are not at fault for the poverty and crime and the murders, then the people suffering the most will look to the logical next step, that maybe it's the people that have been running and ruining their cities for decades. All of the major cities with the highest poverty rates have been run by Democrats, like the number one city in poverty, Detroit. They have been run by Democrat mayors since 1961. Milwaukee, the site of the most recent riots, hasn't seen a Republican mayor since 1908. And the killing fields of America, otherwise known as Chicago, has had Democrat mayors destroying the inner city since 1931. To be a true patriot would be to call these Democrat politicians out for their failure of their constituents, but it would only work if it was those same people who voted them into office year after year as the ones to call them out. After 3,000 people died on September 11, 2001, it should have been in their memory that this country became one in respect to their unintentional sacrifice for our values as a nation. But even though it looked as though we were headed in the right direction, it was the left in this country that sabotaged the great patriotic resurgence. All for political gain. It's not until America wakes up and thinks for itself to realize who truly has our best interests at heart that we will once again be indivisible as a people with liberty and justice for all. And that's the Liberal Education Annex for today, September 12th, 2016. We'll be back right after these very important messages. Stay tuned. Since 9-11, more than 8,500 children under the age of 18 have lost a military parent, the heroes of this nation, in service to our country. What can be done for the families left behind after a loved one makes the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom? Hello, I'm Gary Sinise. While we can never adequately offer our gratitude to America's fallen service members or the families they leave behind, we can strive to make positive changes in their lives. That's why, along with the entire Gary Sinise Foundation, I'm so proud to partner with Snowball Express, the largest gathering of families and children of our fallen military heroes. Snowball Express is a top-rated 501c3 charity foundation that champions the future of the children of our fallen military heroes with communal healing. It connects families with one another through year-long efforts and culminates in a five-day, four-night extravaganza that they will never forget. And once you've seen the smiles on the faces of these children and their families, you won't either. It's impossible to truly comprehend the struggles these children and their families experience in the absence of their fallen fathers, mothers, husbands, and wives. But we must help them heal and find new hope for the future however we can. Entertainers, politicians, living heroes, year-round volunteers, charity partners, businesses, and grateful citizens across America have been inspired to help put together these joy-filled experiences while raising money and the spirits of those who have given so much. We will hold our brave heroes in our hearts for the love they gave us we have shared from the start. Every trip at Snowball is made to celebrate the life that our heroes lived. Our loved ones would not want us to sit and cry. They would want us to live life and to laugh at our heart's content.
That's what the efforts of volunteers and sponsors of Snowball Express do. Help those left behind to live lives that uplift and honor their fallen loved ones. Now we need your help. Your sponsorship is more important than ever. I'm Gary Sinise for Snowball Express. Thank you. You're going to make a difference. Thanks for listening to War. War. A place where we assassinate liberal lies with documented facts. Home of Team Ninja. A group created to expose DC lies and give you something to think about each and every night. Every night. Every night. We are America Radio. Well, it's about time to end our special 9-11 edition of the Ascend Conservatism Show. We want to thank all of you out there for joining us here tonight. And don't forget, you can reach out to us on social media. Just go to Twitter at CFJ, or you can go to Facebook at the Ascend Conservatism Show. You can also download our politifix from Pinterest at the Liberal Education Annex. Thanks once again for joining us. I want you all to have a great Monday night and have a happy and safe week ahead. This is CFJ signing off. Bye-bye.